conduct that changes the behavior that changes our interpersonal relationship grace 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 because grace that is greater than all your weakness greater than all your deficiencies greater than all your incompetencies the grace that makes us the people we ought to be the grace that makes us the man of God you ought to be, the woman of God you ought to be, the child of God that you ought to be. Grace, grace of God. Grow in that grace. Continue in that grace. Live in that grace. And let that grace affect and influence. Let that grace affect and influence every area of your character. That grace leads to godliness. We have the promise of godliness. We have the power for godliness. We have the possibility of godliness. And it makes us persistent in godliness, righteousness, sanctified life, sanctified heart, sanctified attitude, sanctified behavior. The grace that leads to godliness. Godliness in the day. Godliness in the night. Godliness in the church. Godliness in the place of work. Godliness with brothers. Godliness with sisters. Godliness in the private and godliness in the public. Grace that leads to godliness. And the Lord is telling us to put more emphasis on the exercise of that godliness. Exercise yourself unto godliness. That as this society is very serious, dedicated, almost fanatical on physical exercise, you become so given and so focused and so addicted to godliness, exercise in godliness. Allow the Lord to make the shift in your heart, the turning out in your heart. Does your language need change? Does your attitude need change? Does the comportment need change? Does the way you feel in your heart need change? Do you need a new touch of godliness in your mind, in your brain, in your heart, in your spirit, in your behavior, in your conduct, in your character? A touch of godliness, divine touch, transformation into godliness, godliness, godliness. Godliness with contentment is great gain. Tell the Lord. Tell the Lord. Beyond healing, beyond deliverance, beyond prosperity, beyond having property, beyond clothing, beyond beauty, beyond being in good shape, godliness is more important. Godliness is more important. You tell the Lord that the Lord himself, the Lord himself, the Lord himself, because this is his purpose. And this is a priority. Godliness. Godliness in your heart and godliness in your home. Godliness in your interpersonal relationship. Godliness in following after the Lord. And it's grace, more grace, greater grace that brings that about in our lives. You need to make up your mind though. You need to take a decision and say, Lord, 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 you'll accomplish this in me. You will accomplish this in me, godliness. Pray that God will help you not to hold on to a form of godliness. Just outward dressing and putting such emphasis on just external things. And then the eternal life, holy life, the meekness, the humility is lacking. And yet all the emphasis is on this form of godliness and the external. And we judge other Christians, evaluate other Christians on the basis of just external things. You tell the Lord, now I'll put the emphasis where the emphasis ought to be. The inner life, the spiritual life, the godly life, the righteous life, the sanctified life. Under the control of the Spirit of God. That will be 
the wonderful evidence, the wonderful evidence that you have been at this convention. And the convention has done some things, not something inside your heart, inside your life. Godliness. The godliness that comes with sanctifying grace, sufficient grace, sustaining grace in your life. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Follow peace with all men, and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. What shall it profit, my brethren, if we have the gain of all the things in this world? If only in this world, in this world you have hope in Christ, will be of all men, of all women, of all church members, the most miserable. It is when you come to the Lord and you put the right thing in the right place, the first thing in the first place, and you say, yes, I know, yes, I know, is the inward character, conduct, lifestyle of godliness that actually matters in the sight of the Lord. For man sees in the outward sense, at the outward, but God looks at the inward, and that's in, that in what life is, what God is wanting you to concentrate upon. And I have this godliness. That's what it takes to get to heaven, you know. And blessed are they that do His will, that they may have a right to enter through the gates into that holy city. Tell the Lord, godliness. Godliness, holiness, sanctification, purity of heart and purity of life. Tell the Lord to do it. It's no respect of persons he did for people like Enoch. He can do it for you. Change their hearts. Change their personalities. Change their conducts. Turn them around. Make them the people, the kind of people they ought to be. If you will pray with importunity and persistence, the Lord will do it. The Lord will do it. The Lord will do it. Give him a chance to do it in your life. And establish this godliness of heart and godliness of life. So that people will see that godliness. They glorify God through your life. There will be shining glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, living big and living strong. Living righteously and holy and godly in you. That's the hope of glory. The intention of the Lord, the desire of the Lord. And the reason why the Lord wants to Calvary to die for you, for me, is so as to bring many sons to glory. Let him hold your hand. Let him lead you. Let him guide you and lead you unto glory. The Lord will do it. The Lord will do it. The Lord will do it. Wanting to bring many sons unto glory. Wanting to bring many sons unto glory. He'll do it. Beholding him, beholding him, looking at him, his lifestyle, his behavior, his demeanor, his humility, the way he did the will of the Father every time, looking at him, modeling your life after him, making him your master, your model, your mentor, so that he'll bring up this life in you, and then your light will shine, and men and women that... You have received the message. From our pastor, Pastor W. F. Kumoye, the General Superintendent of the Palais Bible Church. It is my wish that as you listen, you accept the old world and you will let them sink into the, your hearts. And by the grace of the Lord, you will never regret it. It is my prayer that by next week, when our pastor shall come up again to present another message, you will be there, your family will be there, and your friends. And I believe as you are listening to the message every week, by the grace of the Lord, you will never be the same. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, O Lord, because of today's message. We thank you, O Lord, because of the one you let us listen to last week and the one we are going to listen to the next week. By the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, if you tarry, we shall listen together once again next week. And if not, every one of us will be there with you in the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because you are the Lord that answers prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.